I hear from there enough. I get this whole spill about people, well, Dan, I hope you come back next week. I'm not at the spin. I was in my football uniform right before game time. My wife said, tell me about this guy. Look real good in his uniform. Oh, I'm not going to get that. My wife, she turned it on. She started cracking up. Thank you, Reedy. Appreciate the heads up. She copied it, and she sent it to everybody. Go, look at this idiot. And I don't know. Everybody here, Joe, is not there tonight. Okay, the paving project, that's down in your area. And yeah, she's saying, yep, that's him. And, uh, that was one of the games of the week. That's yeah. Why I was yeah, that's why we were watching. Well, North, yeah, North, 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 I now call the Norton City Council Committee Work Session to order Monday, October 15th, 2018, time 701. Would you please stand for Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silent prayer? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Mr. Gaynor? Here. Mr. McClone? Here. Mr. Carrant? Here. Mr. Towsley? Here. Ms. Whipkey? Here. Mr. Kernan? He's excused. Mr. Pilot? Here. Uh, first item on tonight's uh, agenda under new business uh, 2019 tax. Certification resolution. Uh, I don't see Mr. Messner. Uh, essentially, this is an annual uh, thing that we do, and all we're doing is confirming that we agree with the rates that the uh, Summit County Tax Commission has set for 2019 taxes. Uh, and this is time sensitive. Uh, to get this back to the Summit County uh, Tax Commission. So I would ask that we waive second and third on this. With emergency language. With emergency. A second. Motion second to add this to Council's next agenda. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Ms. Whipke? Yes. All right, the next item uh, goes right along with this. Uh, it's, again, an annual thing that we do. Uh, and it essentially just allows us to file with the tax commission and receive our, our taxes from, actually, the 2018 taxes. Uh, I think it's the 18. From the 2018 collections payable in 2019 so it just allows us to get those funds uh, as soon as they're available and this is just that request any questions and again time sensitive and uh, this time I'll move to add this to council's next agenda waiving second and third with emergency no second Motion and second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Uh, next item is the auditor of uh, the state fee, uh, the MOU with that. Uh, according to Mr. Messner, uh, uh, Yost is not going to be the person in charge of this anymore. Uh, he's limited out so somebody new will be coming in so good chance that the uh, tax fees or the the fees that we pay will be going up this is a contract that will go ahead and, and lock us in for the same fees for the next two years of what we currently pay 
Uh, Mr. Messner, you care to add anything to that? Uh, that's exactly correct, Mr. President. Uh, for the last, well, ever since I've been here, the uh, LGS fee has been 18750 It has not changed in the last four to five years, and they're willing to lock that rate in for the next two years. Uh, the thinking is that the new auditor, since there has not been a rate increase in five to six years, the new auditor will surely increase and probably be a lot more than the 18750 So they're willing to give us a contract uh, for the next two years and lock our fee in. So regardless if they do implement a rate increase, we will not pay anymore. That's correct. And I don't remember, was this time sensitive? Yes. It, they need to be approved by October the 26th, so I believe we have time to give it a first reading next week. Yeah, all right. Uh, then at this time I move to add this to Council's next agenda with the emergency waiving second and third. A second. Motion and second. Any other discussion? I have just one quick question. Yes. If I may. Um, I'm just making sure that's still to be paid for year by year, correct? That's correct. Okay. That's all I needed. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. President, I might clarify um, um, with Mr. Towsley's question. There's actually two auditing fees. One is for the LGS auditors, which this one covers. The state auditors also charge. Uh, their rate kind of goes up and down based on uh, what they think it'll take them to get the audit done. So I, I don't want to mislead council. There's actually two auditing fees. One is for the preparation of the CAFR, which is this one that we're, you're looking at tonight. The other one is to actually <coughs> audit the CAFR, which the state auditors. All right. Any other comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Uh, next item, Worcester Road Design GPD contract. Mr. Grant. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on this, as I understand, this is to accelerate. Um, we've got the opportunity to put this design in place a little faster. Yes, uh, originally this was slated for 2020, and we have an opportunity to have it moved up in bid with uh, July of 2019. Uh, as most people know, Worcester Road's pretty bad, so. Along with Medina Line. Right. At the same time that they would be doing Medina Line. Yes. Mr. President, the, uh, in some conversations we have with AMATS, um, if we design the project and get it ready for bid uh, in July, uh, when the new fiscal monies are awarded in July 1, uh, we could uh, start construction for Medina Line and Worcester Road at the same time. So this will allow us to design the, uh, the, the road. GPD did Medina Line, uh, so keeping with that, uh, being that we're going to combine the two projects, we want the designs to be the same. Uh, we have proposed uh, GPD be uh, selected. And 80% of this uh, project, not the engineering side, but the project itself, comes from AMATS and then 20% would come from the permissive tax here in the city. Just Yes. We're going to use two things. One, the 16.5 that's before you will be coming out of that permissive tax fund. It's a permissive tax street. And because the county assesses a license plate tax for us, for the city, um, we will be using the monies at the county to facilitate this in the Medina line project. So next year's paving budget will not include these two streets because AMATS and the, and the permissive tax funds will be coming from the county. So we'll be doing these roads on top of what um, our annual paving budget includes. As I understand, this is something that's requested as ASAP. That means 
we need to do this readings? Uh, yeah, we can do a couple readings. I mean, as long as we get it done in November, we'll be okay. Okay. We have we have till really want it the design done by. We'd like to use the monies that we have allocated this year in the permissive tax fund. So we just would like to pass by the end of the year. Okay. So, so I would move that we uh, move this to the council's next business and with emergency language. Mr. Karen. Could I ask a question real quick? Mm -hmm. um, I, I just have a question. I know I've talked to you, Mr. Fowler, about my concerns on Worcester Road. Does this um, um, quote have anything to do with the water conditions and um, <clears throat> the drainage over there on Worcester Road. One of, if you, one of the, there is some survey work that's included okay. in the design, which will include making sure that we address the water situation. Mr. Hess has met with Josh and discussed the issue out there, and we got to correct that in order to keep the road. Okay, so that's something forward. we're kind of going to do before this even comes together. Or I'm just trying. Well, to they're ask. looking at it at the same time. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Hess has addressed his concerns. He thinks some of the road design work is going to have to make some improvements to the street to help with the drainage, and then ultimately that will help. So in any case, when the road is done, there won't be water sitting on it yes. any longer. Yes, right. Great. Some of it's going to need crowned. Right, we're going to have to crown it. We're going to have to you know, adjust how the water is flowing now. Because right. if, you, if you even see some of the topography mm -hmm. doesn't permit the water to flow off, and that's, that's Larry's biggest concern. Mr. Hess has said we have to get the water off. Okay, thank you. And as we discussed in Board of Control, not only will they be addressing that, but also looking to make sure that the base is right. constructed properly. And if it's not, then we'll make the necessary... Uh, changes to, to bring it up to speed. Great. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Yes. Um, just for clarification, is 16-5, we're putting that whole bill, the uh, eighty twenty doesn't enter into that? Correct. 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 And Thank that's you. gonna be, come out of the permissive tax fund though. Yeah, the license fee. Correct. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. Towsley? Yes. All right. Next item, uh, health care for employees. Mr. Towsley? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, it's my understanding we have a new health care proposal for the employees, and basically from what I can see, it looks like the rates are going up about 10%. Um, is there anything the administration would like to add? Yeah, we explored several options with the with the health care. Um, this was our best option at the time. It's ten percent for the two year period, so it's nine point nine percent, and that's a one time this year fee. So it's all front loaded, but it's over two year period, and there's one premium holiday at the end of the contract. So there is a. So really, it's for 23 months, um, but we are still considering other options. But at this time, this was our our options were very limited in what we could do. You said you did do some comparisons with other insurance companies. Is that what you just said? We explored several options with other brokers, with other companies. Um, and we're still continuing to explore that. We believe that the contract is month to month, which means that we would have time to make an adjustment going forward. We'll just continue with what we have at present until we can ensure that the decision that we think may be better is ultimately the best decision for us. Okay, so though this, the 10% is a two year deal, the yes. payments are month to month. Correct. Okay. Yes, we don't. It wouldn't be all up front. We pay about eighty thousand, seventy nine thousand dollars a month right now. So, if in four months you find something you like better, that can right. be brought forward. We're, we're we're exploring that still okay. to this day. And I know Mr. Karen had something he needed to ask yes. as well. I have several concerns. Of course, this is my forte. Uh, you're stepping into the medical arena, which prescription is a part of that, 
And if you would like to have an article, just one that I have from the Columbus Dispatch talking about carve out of what the PBMs, and a PBM is a pharmacy benefit manager. I had a conversation this afternoon with a county commissioner south of here who is also a pharmacist and deals with this same problem. And we are being fleeced, not just as a city. For example, Ohio Medicaid found after they've been pushed for years to go look at it, they were fleeced out of $240 million over the past year for overbilling from the insurance companies. And this is the pharmacy benefit manager alone. Pharmacy benefits is part of our package. You can do it as a carve out and you can do several things with it. But I, there are sm some small companies that would be capable of handling this. And I don't have the names for those with me. I can get those. But I think it's something that you can use as a bargaining chip. They're going to say that by adding the pharmacy benefit, that you will pay less, which makes no sense at all. Because if you're paying for extra things, why would it cost you less? It's because they're bilking the payer. And if you go for total transparency, which means you require them to show you what was billed to the employer and what the cost was and what the rebates are, they're going to get real skittish. But they would possibly do that. The, the state is dealing with this same problem. All employers of multiple, large employers, all cities should be looking at this. But there are 50 articles from the Columbus Dispatch that they've written this past year that detail this, and I would encourage you strongly to look at that before signing this contract. The one that was ones that were implicated in this were Express Scripts, and Caremark, and I believe those are the ones administering the benefit for the city of Norton. I would look very closely at that. Our city could be overpaying, and has been overpaying for years, but you didn't know what to look at. And this happened before you came here. I did read an article, if I could. I did read an article, uh, Dan, about uh, isn't there a law, either federal or state, that's being considered right now about the PBSs? Yeah. There are a number of laws right now in Ohio and federally. Up until just this past week, when President Trump signed an order eliminating gag clauses, mm -hmm. which was a contract with all pharmacies that meant I and no other pharmacist that's contracted with any insurance company was allowed to tell the patient or to talk to you, the employer, it's a gag clause. And so... We were forbidden from speaking about that to anyone. It finally hit a federal level, and Trump signed a bill that passed both houses of con Congress uh, and eliminated that. And I think it's in effect right now, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> our, our attorney general also made an effort down in Columbus to strike that prior to President Trump. And since I'm discussing the Medicaid and Ohio, the effect on Ohio, um, I believe I am still covered by what the Attorney General did this past year. Anyway, it, since I'm not acting as a pharmacist but as a council member, I think I'm exempted anyway. Anyone else? I do have a question also. Um, was, was there an urgency on this? The contract takes effect December 1st. Okay. So we have to have it done by December 1st. Now, to answer Mr. Krantz's problem, the question, and the biggest problem we have with that is this is a traditional insurance, not self insurance. So I would agree with your statement if we were self insured and in paying for the prescriptions as we would. This is a program that, regardless of usage, this is the fee we pay. So, but most of those large employers are self-insured. Therefore, they would be paying per prescription for that benefit. We're not. This is a package deal. Regardless if you use 500 scripts a month or zero, this is the fee that we pay per employee. Okay. I would still like to take a look at it. If it's going up 
something's in that 10%. We are part of a consortium and we're paying for, essentially we're paying for the rest of the consortium healthcare. We have young employees who do not use healthcare. Okay. The review of the healthcare, we use about 70% of the money we put forward. So we're subsidizing at 30% into a consortium that covers everybody else's losses. This is a traditional insurance, might like auto insurance. Right. That's why we're trying to review what the best course of action for us is. Since you mentioned that you were reviewing it, I wanted to add that other information. So if there's anything useful there, I'd be quite no. happy to meet with you and discuss it. Uh, some of this probably isn't useful for council's floor, but um, I wanted to bring up this area because it has been such a hot topic in Columbus and in Washington lately. And it's one that I'm very, of course, passionate about, but well-versed in. So. If there's anything I can do to help you with that, I would be happy to do it. Any other comments? Well, with that, then I will uh, make a motion to add Ordinance 113 2018 to next week's agenda with emergency language. Second that. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. All right. Any unfinished business? Yes, Mr. President. Yes. Um, I'd just like to let it be known, since we had some questions last week on Ordinance 103-2018 concerning the tasers, that we did let the public know that we did hear back from the company, and um, we will own those tasers outright at the end of five years and we are not required to destroy them. It was just the three that we already have that we received um, the $800 discount on that will be destroyed. Just, just to let you know, we did double check and they sent back to us and said, no, that's not the case. All right. oh, I also, um, I sent out an email I would really like to see that language change to a lease purchase just because we have looked, used that language in the past and that's what we're doing with these. And it says strictly purchase now. So if we could uh, look into having that done. And did it, it had its first read last week? Yeah, well, we would have to amend it. We would have it. to amend it then. But. but it's much more clear. And since we've used that language in the past, Lease to purchase or purchase to or whatever. So. And I did have questions last week too, but I have no questions now. I, I'm satisfied 100%. All right. Any other unfinished business? Where do we stand on the fences around the golf course drive? <coughs> oh, around the pump station? Yes. Mr. Towsley had asked that question, and uh, Mr. Dombowski and I were at the last or two committee meetings ago, and Mr. Dombowski said he was going over the plans. I will forward you the email that he sent to me at the last request. And did we make out anything on the uh, engine brakes on the highway? I had Justin reviewing that, and there is a belief that we have limited ability on the highway because it's a federal, it's a highway, and because while it is in our municipality, highways have different right standards, so to speak. So. I, I just see where a lot of communities, even on state highways, they've got it posted. State uh, highway, I'm sorry, interstate, the interstate highway. Okay. Interstate is different than a like 224 or, or 21. We can have it on 21, but I think we're not able to put that on 76. That was my. Could I, Scott, if you're done? Yes, go ahead. You, uh, Mr. Fowler, you're saying, did you just say you have it on 21, the signs? We no. don't. I'm just saying we could put it on 21. Okay. It's, it's, it's just like. Copley. Let's let's it's down the road on Copley. It's twenty one. Let's use the. Yeah. I mean, here's a good. Let's, let's take a step back. Just like us trying to erect the signage 
for the traffic enforcement. Right. We would have to get ODOT's permission, and I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty <laughs> close to certain that they wouldn't let us put engine brake restriction signage on 76. We have authority over 21 to put signage up. So if we wanted to put that signage up on 21, we had every right that we could do that. Okay, the reason I asked that, I did have a call this past week from a lady who lives on a road parallel, runs parallel with 21. And she says she can't understand why, and neither can her husband, who is a truck driver for a major trucking company, why trucks would need to jake brake on 21 in that area because it's not uphill downhill or anything and i said well it could be that they're getting on or off the expressway or route 261 and they're using the jake brake and he said as a truck driver and he's been there 30 some years that it's ridiculous for a truck driver to have to use that jake brake any place on that 21 any place and unless an extreme emergency and i asked him about 261 since he is an expert, I would think, he said that even though there's a slight incline coming down 21, I mean 261 eastbound, that no one, no trucker, should have to use a jake brake in that area. So I would suggest, if it's legal, that we at the very least put it on 261 and 21, um, because there have been numerous complaints on 261 and um, I, I, I know for a fact, because I live right there, that every single day and night mainly, as the trucks are bypassing the intersection of 76 and 21 and coming down 261 to go to Cockley, that they are using the Jake brakes coming down that hill because they wake me up all hours of the night. And so it's not just other people. I hear it on a personal basis i know it's a fact they're not just complaining to be complaining so if there's any way legally possible that we can do that i think it would be an excellent idea to do it and i'm sure there's other areas in the city that it could be utilized uh, I, I can't if if what he tells me is true i don't know anything about driving a truck but if what he tells me is true there's no necessity for it so we ought to look into it as soon as possible. All right. Uh, any other unfinished business topics for next work session? Uh, I was talking with Mr. Messner, uh, trying to get uh, see what we can get with the budget uh, first of November, first uh, committee of the whole. Worst case, it would be the first uh, uh, council meeting. And we can start uh, going over that and uh, start uh, clearing your uh, evenings there. I, Mr. Messner, uh, his mind sharp as a tack, and he uh, indicated that uh, we it took three uh, council meetings, Committee of the Holes, uh, last time to go through the whole budget. So... Uh, make sure that you look it over. Once we receive a copy, we should get a copy before the meetings. And then uh, look it over. If you have questions, obviously feel free to call Mr. Messner. Uh, try to get as much <coughs> answered before the meetings, and it will help uh, expedite the meetings a little bit and or give us enough information to be able to discuss it thoroughly with all the information at the meetings. Anybody else? Public comments? Mayor? Thank you. Um, I just have one that I would like to announce. I did not uh, announce it last week, but the Norton Women's Club will be having a craft and gift show uh, this coming Saturday, October 20th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's at the Norton Elementary School here on Cleveland Maslin Road. Uh, there's a $2 donation. Uh, I guess upon entry, uh, strollers are allowed, food for purchase, all on one floor. Um, then they'll have a uh, craft and gift show, uh, and your donation, our craft and gift 
show and your donation helps area children involved in the following programs here in Norton and it's a shoe fund food fund Christmas in the park scholarships books in a blanket Norton safety town Easter egg hunt the holiday baskets and much more so if anybody uh, those who uh, are familiar with some of these programs that the Norton Women's Club get behind and uh, and do every year for the residents and for our community. They're uh, also, they're, it's, it's a great uh, thing they do, and uh, hopefully people will come out and support the craft show this coming Saturday from 9 until 3. All right. Anything to add to anybody else? Okay. Yes. Yeah, this is, on the, I guess, under the cover of health. But uh, I did not make a, and a report to last quarter, and I haven't really written one yet, but I've talked to the health commissioner who is going to copy out to council her newsletter that goes out uh, quarterly. And so I believe you're going to be receiving that, uh, Mr. Pilot. And uh, the other is more of a, an area of concern in that on North Hill there were a number of residents over there, not from the same residents, but a group of them, that were eating mushrooms out of a backyard. Uh, my understanding, they may have been of foreign um, descent, but uh, immigrant or not, you don't want to pick something that you don't know what it is and put it in your mouth or cook it. So um, there were a number of them, some in liver failure. There's already been a liver transplant, and there's some information that was sent to the city, I believe, but I would want to make sure the residents were well aware of the hazards of eating mushrooms. If you don't know what it is, don't put it in your mouth. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Nothing else coming before council this evening. Meetings adjourned at 733. Oh. We didn't get any. There was no public comments, was there? No. I was going to say I didn't think there was. Okay. <laughs>